My name's Mubi, um, and I'm an assistant buyer. I used to work for Selfridges, and then I've been in uh, collect sneakers apart from that. My name's Kish. I've been around for a minute. I um, used to sell records and DJ and do radio and all that kind of thing. And um, now I'm starting a new company up doing home distribution. Born and bred in London, South London, Brixton, Acre Lane. Born in Clapham, but lived in Brixton all my life. And, um, I'm from outside, I'm from Ellsbury, Bucks. But I was coming up uh, to London since I was a you know, real small small little kid and uh, just got up to buy records, comics, whatever, you know, and kits and that. So uh, I now live in London for the past well, like eight, nine years. I think London is like a, an amazing base, say, for different cultures, just to, you know, share and express their views with each other. Um, it's, it's one of these cities that are unique in comparison to, you know, your usual, say, Tokyo, New York, you know, Paris, Milan. I mean, if you go there, you see a certain type of individual, you, you see a certain type of, say, folk, people. But you walk in the streets of London on a Saturday or a Sunday, you see so many different colours, peoples, cultures. It's amazing, yeah. it's like, I, I, I've never, I've been to these other cities and I've never seen that kind of mix before. Stussy got, you know, got made official in this country, you know, first. It wasn't the Japanese, it wasn't anywhere in Europe, it wasn't even the US, because it just looked like a surf skate brand. But we, you know, the whole cool thing came from here. When I really started, say, kicking off my sneaker collection when I was around about the 17, 18 mark, when I started to work, you know, earn a little bit of money and, you know, had a little bit of expenditure and, you know, I put that into shoes really. I've been collecting kids since, uh, since uh, I was really, really young, so we're going back like 88, 87 or something like that. But no one really had dunks over here because we're not really a basketball orientated country. Uh, we're more on the football tip on the terraces and that kind of thing. It's hip hop that kind of brought the basketball sort of aesthetic through onto, onto what we're about. For me, I'm hip hop, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely, I've had a same kind of hip hop influence as well. Um, but I try to keep as individual as I can. I mean, people always say, know me for, say, colour blocking and matching shoes with what I'm wearing up top to perfection, really. Kicks always determine what I wear up top as well. So, wherever I feel like wearing on a day, put those on my feet first, then I think about what I'm going to wear. Well, I mean, the kicks that I remember as a kid was like, um, obviously, Air Maxes, um, and Jordans, mm. primarily Jordans, yeah. you know, and other brands as well, of course, but um, those, those are the sort of main things. And then, um, Subsequently, after that, we used to see people rappers like Rakim, Lord Finesse, and that rocking Air Force Ones, and I was like, oh, what are those? One of those, and then from that, that was the evolution that we kind of got into dunks. Is what I feel. The SB take on the dunk came out. I think it was in around about 2000, 2001. That's where it really started shooting up, um, and that's where I really started to notice. You know, a lot of people starting to wear dunks again. Um, but before that, you know, retros came out. And I think it was 98, 99. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, they did the Celtic, Golden Rods, etc., Syracuse colorways, um, and they went slightly unnoticed. I mean, people bought them at the time, but not as much as you see them are now. It's such an iconic shoe. Duffel was one of the first stores to bring the imports over from the US when they first started releasing them. And you, I mean, one of the other things to consider though is it was a sort of niche thing, it was a real cool thing, so not everyone was up on it. So only certain people were up on it. So you know, as Boopy says, when the SB came on and it got a little bit out there and it, and it flipped into a new context, then it started gaining momentum as well. At the moment, I'm wearing an SB take on the on the Dunk High. Um, it's the T19. Came out a couple of years ago. Um, it, it's a premium leather's been used. And... Uh, I got a pair of um, uh, Stussy Dunks on. Um, the reason I got them on, I don't know. Uh, felt like I haven't worn them in years actually and to be honest it's one of the, the first collaboration dunks if not the first collaboration dunk that ever came out um, basically very subtle uh, you know you, you get maple and you, you, you know sort of cream and chocolate and that and then ostrich leather swoosh um, you know I had a leather inside which you know it's extremely well constructed it's got a slightly different cut um, to other dunks it's a bit more narrow on this bit here my favourites probably I would say the golden rod just being bright yellow with the black, you know, subtly the black is subdued within the yellow. Um, Unless you go along from that, I'll probably say the Wu Tang gun. Oh, yeah, with a little, the yeah, Wu -Tang, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, for me, it's all about color. For me, it's all about, you know, how bright the shoe can be and how bright I can express myself. I'm, I'm lucky to be Asian and have that 
kind of brown skin that colour kind of, you know, appreciates. The different, say, colourways that came out with the Dunk, you know, I went for you know, every single colour that you could get, really, because that's just me, I just wanted everything that you could get your hands on, really, so I chose, you know, the reds, the, you know, the yellows, the greens, they were just perfect for me, they were so bright and vibrant, and they looked great on as well, so. Mm. One of the first shoes to sort of flip the game with regards to introducing colour <laughs> into, you know, on, onto the foot, really, you know, and, and basically the way that Nike invested in the, in the college basketball programme is something to be you know, um, very respectful for yeah, because, um, you know, they were, they were offering an identity, an individual identity for these players um, and, 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 you know, for the colleges as yeah, well, yeah. you know, so... It was, it's like a good. supporter's shoe, really, you yeah. know, yeah. they could rep their team via their shoes, so... Only the, the players could get those colours, mm -hmm. so yeah. the, the supporters wanted them and, you know, the street cats wanted them as yeah, well, and they couldn't, and so I think it was like, you know, Probably came out about accident. No one expected there to be such a mm -hmm. demand. Yeah, it's all course, brand new, course, yeah. brand new territory. So I think be true to your school is the innocence of a, of a young person, individual, and that individual growing up and expressing themselves how they would express themselves without the influence of the outside world. Exploring, you know, just you know, just. You know, trying to absorb you know everything out there and then work out what, what suits you as well and, and, true, and suits your true essence and your true soul as you were when you were younger and not try to get too carried away with things you know and um, you know I mean the way we dress we dress to our style yeah. and the way movie might dress might not suit the way I dress and vice versa but it works so just suiting you just suit yourself as an individual I guess I mean we're in a fortunate position oh, big time. you know big time. there's people out there who might want to express who can't express